Hi, I'm Jerry's Doctor, and today we're going to talk about basic skills and skill planning. This is a core class, core standing for Capsular Orientation Related Education. This is a curriculum developed by Eve University, and these courses are designed to give new players a grounding of skills and information to help them through their Eve career. The core classes are designed to be easily understandable, and this visual guide is designed to help you through the presentation. This should take about 30 minutes, the focus being to make you a better capsuleer. The core classes library includes 18 classes which have been designed to help you attend class, observe, and practice the skills in order to improve your gameplay. Eve University offers these classes live. Classes may be attended by any capsuleer and are advertised on EUNI's course calendar at calendar.eveuniversity.org. You can find the details for their voice server and connection settings at this link. To attend a core class, join lecture.etech uni chat channel, download and install Mumble, connect to an EVE University voice server, and please follow the EVE University communications policy, which, as a behavioral guideline, basically boils down to don't be a dick. I'll be recording these classes so that those who are unable to attend a live class, whether because of your time zone or other prior commitments, you will be able to follow along on YouTube. Basic skills and skill planning. The scope of this class is to cover the basic skills you train in game, cover the basics of skill planning and skill queuing. This class is designed for new or inexperienced players or those who may be returning to the game after a long absence. This covers both alpha and omega clones. The difference between alpha and omega clones is that alpha clones replace the old 21 day trial. You can now play for free without having to pay for a subscription fee or purchase a month of gameplay. The disadvantages to that are described here. If you'd like to know more about the alpha and omega clone differences, please be sure to visit the EVE developer blogs online. Alpha clones, as opposed to omega clones, train at a basic speed. They have a limited skill selection, which limits the ships that they can access and the weapons they can use. And they have a 24 hour skill queue. So for example, if you had three skills that take seven hours to train and one skill that took four hours, you could fit all four of those skills in, even though they add up to 25 hours, because you've been able to be begin all of those skills in a 24 hour period. You could not, however, add another skill on top of that. You may also only have a maximum of 50 skills training in one day or at any time. So for example, if you've had a whole bunch of skills, which only took eight minutes to train each, you would still be limited to a maximum of 50 skills in that day. You can train twice as fast as an alpha in the Omega state. So if you're currently subscribing to EVE Online or paying for a subscription, uh, whether that be through Plex or by another means, um, you train twice as fast. You also benefit from an unlimited skill selection. You can access all of the modules in the game provided you've trained for the ability to use them. You gain an unlimited skill train duration as an Omega player as well, which means that if you have enough skills queued up to have your skill queue run into 200 days or more, that's perfectly okay. They'll just continue to train while you're offline. And like Alpha Clones, Omega clones are limited to 50 skills in their queue, but this is a less restrictive um, barrier for Omega clones because that 50 skills can run for a very long time. To upgrade to Omega from Alpha, there are three options available to you. The first of those is, of course, to pay with real world dollars. If you are not of the age of majority or don't have access to a credit card or a payment method that allow, allow you to pay real-world dollars online for this, you can also access other vendors and purchase what's called an EVE time code. EVE time codes, or ETCs, are alphanumeric numbers, um, sets, so very similar to the activation codes you would use for like a prepaid phone that you can purchase from certain online vendors who may accept other payment methods such as PayPal. And those time codes can be exchanged for gameplay time in your EVE administration panel. Of course, the third method for playing or paying for your playtime is through Plex. The purchase of Plex can be done in game using Interstellar Credits or ISK, or you can purchase it with real world dollars. The advantage of paying with Plex is that it's an in game item which goes into your Plex vault, a custom holding container for it within the game. 
Plex can be accessed from all of the tunes on the same account, and the advantage of it is that it can be bought and sold for ISK and converted back into ISK. The benefit of this, other than having a place to basically stockpile your wealth, uh, like you, uh, an investor would purchase gold or commodities in the real world, is that this may also be exchanged for game time at a ratio of 500 plex to one month game time. Plex can also be used to purchase vanity items such as skins, uh, outfits for your characters, um, skill injectors and extractors, and also other items such as multiple character training certificates. Base skills are skills for which there are no requirement which form the prerequisites for other skills. These are things like gunnery. Core skills are skills that without that skill you can't do that thing. Things like missile launcher operation. Without that skill you can't fit and operate missile launcher. Essential skills are skills which are considered by everyone to be must-haves for any new pilot to train. A good example is evasive maneuvering. Without evasive maneuvering, you're not very mobile in space. Fitting skills are skills which affect your pilot's ability to fit modules to their ship. Think of it like engineering classes that your pilot would need to understand before they can do their pre-flight checks, walkthroughs, and generally understand how to put weapons and other modules on their ship. Examples are weapon upgrades and advanced weapon upgrades. Skill bonuses and training time. Skills give a fixed bonus per level. For example, target management. Each level of the skill you train gives you an extra target that you can lock. The time required to train skills grows higher and higher the more you train. The growth is exponential. You can train 80% of the maximum benefit of a skill and about 20% of the overall time investment. That said, for some skills, the fifth level training, while the longest, offers an exceedingly important benefit to your character's ability to operate their ships. In some cases, it's essential, and those skills should be trained to level 5 as soon as is convenient. Which skills in particular should be trained to that level immediately can be applied to you either by your corporate recruiter or by uh, your mentors within the game community. Training times for Alpha Clones start off at 16 minutes for the first level, just under an hour and a half for the second, seven hours for the third level, and almost two days for the fourth level. You can see how this growth curve goes, and as you might guess it, it's almost 10 days for the fifth level train. So it does feel like a very long train for an Alpha Clone to train a first level skill to level 5, but again, some of those essential skills will come in handy um, and you should train them as soon as you can fit it in. Training times for Omegas, however, by comparison, are much shorter, starting at about 8 minutes, 38 minutes, 3 hours and 10 minutes, and going up from there with the 5 day train on a 5th level of a first times skill. This course is going to cover the skill basics, and all skills share certain similarities. The first is that any individual skill only has five levels of competency. They queue in order to determine training order, and skills cannot be trained before the prerequisites. This includes levels within the same skill. You can't train the third level of evasive maneuvering until you've trained the second. Skill points are a measure of how long you've been training any given skill, and skill points accrue over training time. Skills train even when you're offline, which means you can set up your skill queue, log off, not play the game for the whole rest of the day. When you log in the next day, those skills will have trained. Acquired, acquiring new skills um, comes from grabbing skill books and doing what's basically called injecting. Now, unlike reading a book in the real world and learning the skill in a class, capsuleers have the ability to take a pre existing skeleton of information. Think of it as a neural framework and inject it directly into their brains. But at that point, it's basically just a skeleton. It's the framework for the knowledge, but it may not be fully filled in. One character per account can train. So once you've picked up those skill books and you've started your process of training, one character on your account can train to flush in those knowledges 
at any given time. When you go to start the next character on the same account training, if you go and create a second account, or a second character on the same account, uh, what will happen is you'll be prompted to purchase a multiple character training certificate, which unlocks extra game time for that other account, another training queue essentially, for that character to train within. The advantage of this is that you can set up alts for yourself to do industry or mine or research or exploration while your main character continues to focus on their combat skills or something of that nature. Skills also may be reproduced or duplicated by other skills in game but confer a higher benefit. I'll give you an example of this. So a one times training skill like Spaceship Command confers an inertia modifier bonus basically making the ship more agile. The advantage here is that this skill trains fairly quickly. It's a one times training skill with primary attribute and secondary attribute of perception and willpower. Now other skills which are similar will often have the same primary and secondary attributes, but not always. However, when they confer a higher benefit, they also have a correspondingly higher training time multiplier. There we go, an evasive maneuvering skill, training level of one, will take twice as long to train as the first level of spaceship command, but it confers a higher benefit. Skill cues will identify um, whether or not you've trained something in order of competency. So when you go to throw in another skill, if you haven't met the prerequisite, it won't let you add it to your queue until the predecessor or the you know, requirement for that skill is put in place above. They'll show which skill is basically in training at this moment, and they'll also indicate to you whether or not a skill has been partially trained. So if you stop your training queue for any reason, or if your skill queue is stopped for you by the game, it will indicate to you where the skill training left off and how much of that skill is left to train before you'll proceed to the next level. And this is usually indicated by a countdown. It will also indicate to you whether or not the skill has been learned yet and whether or not it's blocked off to you by your account status. Untrained skills show up as gray, current training skills show up blue, and any partially trained skills will be indicated with a partially trained block and also a countdown queue to the amount of time remaining to train. If something hasn't yet been injected, then you won't have the ability to train it and it will show up as a small square. Skills which have been blocked off to you by your clone status, for which you do not have the skill books, would be a small yellow block or a large yellow block corresponding. If a skill has a requirement which has not yet been met, it will show you how many levels of that skill you have trained towards completion. You can starting off with the basic skill book injection, flesh out those skills a lot faster than just spending time on them. The way to do this, and this is a bit of a cheat, is to use skill injectors. Skill injectors are essentially a syringe full of blue goo, which is the extracted knowledge or neuroplasticity from another capsuleer's brain. Basically, a character who has a surplus of skills can take a skill extractor and pull those extra skill points, that extra neural matter, directly out of their clone and sell it to you, at which point you can inject that into your head and essentially throw some meat on the bones of that skill that you're learning. This will vastly accelerate how quickly you finish skills, but it's also very, very expensive. Essential skills cover improving your attributes, improving the tank of your ship, helping you to get around faster, and improving targeting. These are the skills which you should focus on training right away, and this list here is focused on Alpha Clone. To make the most of those essential skills, you should build a training queue that looks something like this, starting off with improving your hull upgrades and mechanics, which will improve your survivability and your ability to repair your ship. Uh, add in shield management, which will make your ship tougher by deflecting some of the damage or absorbing some of the damage that comes in before it starts hitting your armor, and will then lead into making your ship faster with warp drive operation and evasive maneuvering. So this will improve how quickly you get around, and then there's always the question of fighting back. So to lock farther away and faster, you're going to want to pick up long-range targeting level 2 and 3. 
this is about a four day to five day training for alpha clones and about two days for an omega clone. To train faster, in addition to skill injectors, which not everybody frankly has the money for, there is skills and attributes and how they play into your, into your character's development. So as mentioned, all skills have a primary and secondary attribute. The higher your character's attributes are in those categories, the faster those corresponding skills train. You can purchase training implants, which artificially boost those attributes. There are cybernetic augmentation, which you plug into your character's clone, which basically has a sub-processing unit or a computer within it that takes care some of the load off of your, your clone's mind so that they can focus on more important things. Handling of those uh, simple measures like keeping track of targets in your overview and such um, so that your clone can focus on the tactical decisions at the moment. Having a full set of attribute implants is called having a training clone. And the reason for this is because it will drastically accelerate the training of all of your skills. A standard set is a full set of five implants with the standard level implant standard conferring a plus four bonus to the attribute which matches up with the slot that it's being injected into. The use of implants requires the cybernetic skill. So a standard set confers a plus four bonus to each of those levels and as such you need to have the cybernetic skill trained to four in order to use the standard implants. If the clone containing the implant is destroyed, so is the implant. You can also use cerebral accelerators. Cerebral accelerators are a class of chemical booster, a drug, which confers a temporary bonus to attributes. Cerebral accelerators in particular are reserved as re event rewards and may drop as loot from slain NPCs or may, granted, may be granted as achievement rewards. A good example of these are the ones which are dropped by the agency mission. The effects of boosters, and there are other types of boosters in game, have a defined duration. They have a benefit and sometimes they expire. This is detailed in the item description. Training the biology skill will confer a 20% bonus to the attribute booster duration per level. So if you have five levels of the biology skill trained, you'll effectively double the duration of almost any booster that you use. There are also attribute remaps. Now these are permanent changes to your character's attributes. They're applied a maximum of three times. Each character gets only three attribute remaps and it is highly, highly recommended that you do not use these until you are a much more experienced pilot because you only get to use them once and the changes are permanent. To make more of your ships, you're going to want to take a look at training some of these skills. The first off is the combat and general purpose skills focusing on the racial frigate, destroyer, and cruiser class ships available to Alpha Clone. These are the first ships that you're going to fly. These are your light fast combat vessels, your anti-frigate support, and the big damage dealers that you'll typically take out on fleet or use for gate camping. Industrials are used by industrial characters to haul stuff around, whether it's stuff you've made you know, taking those things to market or uh, loot that you've gathered from killing rats in your area of space. Haulers are indispensable for getting stuff around. If you want to get started in mining, you'll want to train up your mining frigate skill and get started either mining ore or harvesting gas. However, to get really into mining, you're going to need to subscribe as a mega because the mining barge, which is a force multiplier in the mining world, is only available to a mega character. To improve the maneuverability of your ship and help you get around faster, you're going to want to learn the afterburner and high speed maneuvering skills. High speed maneuvering particularly unlocks micro warp drives, so it is a core skill. Better targeting and target management come from the target management skill and sensor compensation skill and making your ship easier to fit this is where we get back to fitting skills weapon upgrades advanced weapon upgrades energy grid electronics and shield upgrades these will improve the tank and the fitting of your ship they'll make it easier for you to survive longer and have more power to work with so that you don't run out of power in the middle of a fight 
When it comes to shooting things, there are guns and there are missiles. Each race has its own flavor of gun that it uses. The Amar use energy turrets. The Kaldari and Galente use hybrid turrets. And the Minmatar use projectile turrets. All of these weapon types, in terms of turreted weapons, come in two flavors, long distance and short distance. When it comes to making guns better, there are skills which improve the rate of fire, how fast they track, how far away they can hit, how hard they hit, and how precise they are. These skills basically give you the ability to change your character's skill from not being able to hit the broadside of a barn to being able to hit a thrown golf ball that was shot, you know, across a room. Making missiles better is very much the same. There are corresponding skills for missiles that help your missiles track a target that is moving to hit a target that is farther away to apply damage precisely to small targets and to deal damage at range. Also in shooting things category is drones. Drones are a weapon platform which is not entirely but almost exclusively unique to the Galente and the Amar. It is definitely favored by those two races. The drones skill allows you to control one additional drone per level up to a maximum of five and the light drone operation gives you a bonus to light drones. However, the drone skills, in order to train into heavier classes of drones and improve the overall efficiency of drones, requires you to subscribe as an Omega character. You can find more information about this on the Eve University wiki at wiki.eveuniversity.org. You can also download Evemon, which is a character planning and monitoring tool, and Pypha, the Python fitting assistant. There's also the Ship Tree and Ship Mastery tab. These can be accessed on your Neocom in-game. And the Ship Tree allows you to view a listing of all ships and the suggested skills which go with each. An example here is the Caracol. The Caracol has a Mastery tab, which you can find within the ship information. And depending on which level of mastery you choose, it will show you a correspondingly deeper set of skills to train. Starting off with Mastery Level 1 will give you a good foundation in the ship's skills and at least let your character sit in the ship. However, it is hardly a qualification for being good at that ship. While it does capture, in increasing levels of skill, your ship, your, your ship captain's ability to pilot that ship, it doesn't do anything for your soft skills as the video game player in knowing how to command that ship and when it's best to plot. However, that said, if you want to be able to train your character quickly into a skill, or in what is relatively the shortest amount of time, going for Mastery Level 3 doesn't hurt. It's not an absolute track to getting you there, and there are people who will agree fervently with me and disagree just as fervently with me for saying this, but especially in the weapons fitting group, you will gain great value from looking at the Mastery tab and understanding what the skills being recommended here do. Now the following advice for your skill planning is mine. My name is Jurius Doctor. I'm a teacher with Iron Armada. I do volunteer to teach with Eve University from time to time. Learning to use tools like Evemon and Pypha to identify the skills that you're missing and the gaps that you have in fits that you want to use will help you to identify the skills that you should train and how to plan them into your skill queue. In Pypha specifically, if, it, if a fit you want to use requires skills you're missing and you've imported your character API so that the program can identify those gaps, the skill book in the top right corner will be red in color if you're missing any skills. If you mouse over the red skill book, it will show you which skills you're currently missing. Here's an example. So on the character Jurius Doctor, I've imported into Pypha my API and also a fit for a Nidogger ratting carrier. Now, the Nidogger is a Minmatar carrier, and Jurius doesn't have all the skills to fly it yet. If you mouse over the red skill book in the top right corner, it lists out the skills that at the time of this recording, Jurius doesn't have yet that would allow him to fly that carrier. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have other characters that can fly a carrier. It just means that this particular carrier 
car carrier pilot is not yet ready. Doesn't have the skills, can't fly it, and at this point not having Minmatar Carrier 1 means that I can't even get into the ship with this character. There's also a huge difference between being able to sit in a ship and being able to pilot it, so do keep that in mind. Also good to keep in mind is the rule of 80-20, and this is where I go back to my comment about the mastery tab. Grouping levels of skills together, dependent skills specifically, will help you to train the entry levels faster. On a blank character, training Mastery 5 on a Talwar, Minimitar Destroyer, is 550 days on an Alpha Clone. That is a very long train. But training Mastery 2 is only 4 days. Mastery 3 is only 500 and f or sorry, 50 days. So in that 550 days, you can get a significant amount of the necessary skills required to pilot that, that ship in under two months as an Alpha Clone. So if there's a ship that's being recommended that you learn how to fly, consider looking at the Mastery tab. It may give you a shortest route to get there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that shortest route has been optimized. For example, let's take a look at the Talwar here. Level 3, 50 days, 11 hours, 58 minutes, 43 seconds on an Alpha Clone. How can we improve that? Well, you can accelerate it by also making sure all the skills of the same level are grouped immediately after their dependency. So Mastery 3 for the Talwar includes these missile skills, and this is why, again, I say pay attention to the weapons groups in the Mastery tab. Mastery 3 includes Missile Launcher Operation 5, Light Missiles 4, Rockets 4, Missile Bombardment 4, Missile Projection 4, Guided Missile Precision 4, Target Navigation 4, Weapon Upgrades 4, and Rapid Launch 4. So this will increase how far your weapons go, how far the missiles hit, how much damage they do, how quickly they fire, how precise they are, and it will allow you to fire both missiles and rockets. But rockets being the sh short distance version and missiles being the longer range. Now, when you program this into an alpha character with zero training, this is what it's going to look like. Starting from an alpha Minimitar clone, it's going to group all your skills together, levels one through five, as you add them in. So rockets, then light missiles, then bombardment, projection, and so on. And in each of those groups, it's going to go one to four, or one to three, or two to three, depending on where your skills are already at and any skills you haven't picked up the skill book for or injected will show up as red, like this. And this will take 50 days to train in with the other skills for this ship. However, if I take that and I reorganize it so that each of the skills are sorted together, they're kind of combed in together, starting at level one, then working to level two, then working th level three, and so on. And furthermore, that I sort them by shortest training time to longest training time. And here's an example starting at rockets, eight minutes and 20 seconds, working down to 38 minutes and 50 seconds for rockets two. Now, warhead upgrades one and missile guided missile precision one are 41 minutes long, but they're still level one skill. So you might get a little bit of dip in time as you go up from one level to the next. But the advantage here is that in sorting it in this way, putting all the shortest skills at the top of the queue and making sure that they follow after their prerequisites, you'll get two thirds of this training done inside the first week. And then you just have to wait for the other ones to trickle through. When you're a new player and you're looking at just this huge mountain of skills, in addition to the mountain of knowledge you kind of need to absorb to play this game, it can really help to make you feel like you're developing a sense of achievement if your skills start clicking off really quickly and you start making that immediate achievement early on. And as those skills continue to trickle in, even if it slows down a little bit as you go, which it will, it's going to feel less um, less of an oppressive climb to get through these skills when you see them coming in regularly. And if you can keep this kind of idea up on your training, you can make it a lot easier to get yourself to the point where a 20 or 30 day train doesn't feel oppressive. It doesn't feel like, you know, just this huge mountain to climb. In short, doing it this way will line up the shortest training times together so you complete the most skills 
as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed this class. If you have, please like, share, and subscribe. And by all means, please check out Eve University. Thank you. I'm Jury's Doctor, Iron Amada.